Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Floss, back again with another video. And today we're gonna do the real review for the Google Pixel 4 XL. Now I'm gonna be honest with y'all. As much as I wanted to hate this phone, I really can't. This phone is a certified beast. But just like all of my other Pixel phones, it's a love-hate relationship. I love having stock Android. I love the speed, the performance, the display, the speakers, the camera's unbelievable. But I hate 4,000 bucks. It's just missing so many things. There's a lot of bugs and it needs some software updates ASAFP. Now Google kind of dropped the ball on this one because this phone could have been glorious. All right, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'll unbox my retail version, pause the video. I'll use it all day long. Then I'll come back and let y'all know everything that I like and everything that I don't like. I just wanna make sure there's no difference between my review unit and my retail version. All right, so no need to go through the specs. Y'all already seen that. Let's get right into it. Shout out to White Shoes. She got the day off. Now, on a side note, if y'all seen my unboxing video, I had this version right here. I thought it was the Pixel 4. All right, so Google trolled me on this one. I didn't realize it was the 4XL. But read the video description for yourself. I, I made all of the changes. After the video, then I seen Pixel 4XL on the bottom. All right, so I got trolled out on this one. On the retail version, you got Pixel 4 XL right on the front. Now I went with the white shoes white. All right, got the Spider-Man on deck. Here we go. One more. Let's see what the white shoes white looks like. Okay. Okay, I'm getting trolled again. Let's try that one more time. One more. Okay, there it is. Okay, so we got the white shoes white version. Y'all already seen everything else in the box. No need to go through that. Here we go. Okay, Whew, now I like this one right here. Let me do the smell test on this. Mm! This one smells like white shoes white. Now here's the difference between the oh so orange and the white. Now real quick, let's take a look at this case. Uh, here we go again. Yeah. One with the black case. Let's see how this looks on the white shoes white version. Oh, this is tough. Yeah, this is my favorite case for the Pixel phones. Here's how it looks on the orange. Here's the gray on my Pixel 3 XL. Another black. All right, these cases are tough. All right, so I'll pause the video. Let me get everything set up. Then I'll come back and let y'all know everything that I like and everything that I don't like. Grab your popcorn and your thought juice because this video might be kind of long. Ooh, I'm feeling this white though. Matt finish on this. Oh, hold on a second. Ladies and gentlemen, White Shoes is back in the building. White Shoes, calm down. <laughs> All right, real quick, let's just, let's just make sure everything else is the same, why not? I give White Shoes something to play with since she came in to work. All right, since Shoes came in, we'll give her some cables to play with. Now, one thing I will say, even before I pause the video, the camera on this phone is amazing, but the thing that is missing is the wide angle lens. I had no wide angle lens. That's such a downer for me, but <laughs> shoes, but <laughs> everything else I could live with. But the no wide angle lens and this face unlock is sick. Let me do that again. Bang, look at that face unlock. But you got that big giant forehead. All right, let me just calm down. I'll set everything up and then we'll get into this full review. Talk amongst yourselves. All right, y'all, so we back in. Now I've been using the white shoes white all day long and there's no difference between the retail version and the review unit. So now we could get started. Let me answer four questions that everybody been asking me all week. Number one, you got a Pixel 3 XL, should you upgrade and get the 4 XL? And I would say no. Now with the four, you are getting face unlocked, but you're losing the fingerprint sensor in the rear. You are getting a better looking phone, looks a lot more modern, but when it comes to the display, the speakers, the camera, the battery, the speed, the performance, they're basically the same. Not to mention, they're pretty trash with the trade-ins. You're only getting 250 bucks for the 3XL, so you're still gonna have to add an extra six to 700 bucks to get the four. That's a no for me, dog. All right, keep your 3XL. Next, if I had to choose iPhone 11 Pro Max or Pixel 4 XL, for me, 
give me the iPhone. You got a better display, better battery, and yes, a better camera. Now we could talk about true tone and contrast and all the bullshit, but think about it like this. 4K 60 frames per second, wide angle lens, game over. Give me the iPhone. Next, if I had to choose, OnePlus 7 Pro or Pixel 4 XL. Now this one is a toss up. All right, both of them have a pretty stock Android experience, but if it was me and my money and the way that I use phones, give me the Pixel. Now with the OnePlus, you got more RAM, more storage, better battery, you got the fingerprint sensor on the front, and you got the pop-up selfie cam that works for face unlock. That's pretty sick. But the way that I use phones, the Pixel, you got better speakers, a better camera, you got the squeezeology, you got the motion sense, and the biggest upgrade for me, wireless charging. I need that. Now look, I know some of y'all don't think wireless charging is important, but the amount of money that I spent on all these wireless chargers and desktop setups and wireless car mounts, I need wireless charging. But like I said, this one is a toss up. Next, which phone has the best face unlock? iPhone 11 Pro Max or Pixel 4 XL? Now for me, I've been using these both all day long, doing all my heavy testing, I'm going with the iPhone. Now don't get me wrong, the Pixel Face Unlock is incredible. It does have a bug, we'll talk about that in a minute. But here's the thing, as incredible and dope as it is, for me, now this is my personal experience, it's not working every single time. Now I like to wear sunglasses a lot. When I'm wearing my sunglasses, sometimes I have to do two, I have to pick, click the power button once, it doesn't open, click it again, then it'll catch my face. With the iPhone, I never, and I mean never, I never have that problem. Even when I'm rocking my disguises, all right, I'm outside stalking people, when I'm using my iPhone, it always catches my face 100% of the time. With the Pixel, I would say 95% of the time. Now we'll talk about the face unlock bug in a minute, but as of right now, the iPhone has the best face unlock in the game. Now, with that being said, let's talk about everything that I don't like. All right, grab your popcorn and your thought juice. I got 11 things that I really don't like, and I got five petty gripes. Number one, the price. 900 bucks for 64 gigs and 1,000 bucks for 128 gigs. The price is too goddamn high. All right, Google, calm down. All right, they done lost their mind with this one. And this is why I say this phone could have been glorious. Imagine 64 gigs for 700 bucks, 128 gigs for 800 bucks. It might have been over for OnePlus. Now, OnePlus does have its hardcore fans, hardcore community. But if you had wireless charge, better speakers, and a better camera with the stock Android experience, the guaranteed updates for the same price, that would have been a total win, flawless victory. But as of right now, that price is too goddamn high. Next, storage options. All right, 64 gigs and maximum 128 gigs, that's trash. Now keep this in the back of your mind. The keywords for this video is trash and garbage. All right, 64 gigs, that's garbage. 128 gigs for a thousand bucks, that's trash. All right, now look, I know somebody's gonna say, oh, I got an iPhone 7 from years ago, 64 gigs. I still got 10 gigs left. Cool story, bro. All right, I'm happy for you, congratulations. But people that's living in the real world, all right, people that's in the game, 64 gigs ain't enough. Especially on a phone that has a dope camera like this, you're gonna wanna shoot your 4K videos. You're gonna wanna save movies to your phone. Now again, I know people are gonna say, what about the cloud? What about the cloud storage? Cloud storage is cool. All right, but if you like me and you fly in these JetBlue flights with the bullshit Wi-Fi, cloud storage is not gonna help you. All right, when you're 30,000 feet above the sky <laughs> and you got that bullshit Wi-Fi, you could barely watch a YouTube video, much less try to go to the cloud and download stuff. That's not happening. Not to mention all y'all scumbags out there living the scumbag life. You don't wanna have all your pictures and videos up in the cloud where somebody could just hack your email account and be living your dream, looking at your girl's butt cheeks. You don't want that. All right, if you're a scumbag, you want all your activities on your phone, so this way when you're ready to turn over a new leaf and become a gentleman, press one button, delete all your, your scumbag history. So I don't like that. Storage options, 64 gigs, that's not enough. All right, 128 gigs, that's trash. Look, the other day I did the Red Magic 3. You got phones coming out right now, 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage, 500 bucks. This phone should have had 128 gigs, the minimum, 
then 512, and then, you know, if you want, throw the big boy out, the one terabyte, like the GOAT phone has. Whatever, let's keep it moving. Next, no expandable memory. Again, that's pretty trash on a phone that's 64 gigs, and you mean to tell me your maximum offering is 128? They need to have expandable memory. I don't want to put all my pictures, all my videos, all my episodes of Family Guy. I could have just dropped it right on the SD card, slapping in the phone. Now, I know a lot of phones don't have SD cards anymore, expandable memory anymore. But if you're only offering 64 and 128 gigs, people need more, more, more and more storage. All right? Especially content creators, people that make videos, photographers, beat makers. You got a thousand beats on your phone. That's going to take up a lot of memory. Expandable memory would have been nice. Next. RAM, six gigs of RAM is the max. Again, I just did the Red Magic 3S. I did 101 bullshit Chinese phones. Look, even a OnePlus, 12 gigs of RAM, right? 12 gigs of RAM, 256 gigs of storage. You mean to tell me for a thousand bucks, I'm only getting six gigs of RAM? Now look, a lot of times the RAM doesn't translate into real life, but on this phone, it actually does. The RAM management on this phone is mediocre. All right, it's definitely nothing like an iPhone, nothing like a Galaxy. And let me give you a perfect example. You ever been chilling on Instagram, all right, and you get to a nice set of buns and you're like, yeah. Then you gotta put your phone down real quick. You gotta do some work, you gotta take a phone call. Then you pick your phone back up and you go back to Instagram, the picture's gone. It automatically refreshes. Poor RAM management, I don't like that. Now one of the things that's dope about the iPhone, even though it does, matter of fact, let's see if I can do a quick demo. Let's, uh, let's take it over to Instagram real quick. You see, now if I want to, I could catch that. I could caught, you see, I just caught it. I could caught, I, I could catch that profile and open it up before it refreshes. All right, the RAM management is way better on iPhones and your Galaxies. Six gigs of RAM. Now I'm not heavy into gaming and all that PUBG bullshit, but they should have had 12 gigs of RAM. Keep up with the competition. Next, no headphone jack. That shit's whack. Google, y'all can have that. That ain't even what I'm mad at. Hashtag bars. Look, I know a lot of phones don't have headphone jacks. We're not going to keep arguing about why do people use headphone jacks. I got a classic car. All right? I need a headphone jack for my auxiliary cable. I know a lot of people that DJ and make beats. They want to connect their DJ controller right to the phone. Headphone jack. I know people that use external mics that make videos. Headphone jack. All right? Headphone jack. But look, like I said, that ain't even what I'm mad at. Not to mention no headphone jack. No dongle. And no headphones in the box for a thousand bucks? Stop it. I right, Google, stop it. A thousand bucks. Look, look, Galaxy phone, you spend a thousand bucks, you get a set of headphones. iPhone, you spend a thousand bucks, you get a set of headphones. All these cheap Chinese bullshit phones, you spend 500 bucks, you get a set of headphones and a dongle sometimes. And some of them even have a headphone jack. No headphone jack, no dongle, no headphones for a thousand bucks. That's a cash grab right there. I, I'm not feeling that at all. Next, the display brightness. Now, y'all remember me complaining about this on the last Google phone? Let me show you. Let's open this up real quick. Let's put this phone on 50%. All right, here's around 50%. Now, let's open up something. Let's go to let's go to Chrome browser. Let's open up Amazon. Here's how your phone looks on 50% brightness. All right, let's make sure we are exactly 50. I'll even be generous. I'll put it 55, almost 60. That's how your phone looks. Now, let me pull out my iPhone. We'll go to the same website. Let's go to Amazon. Matter of fact, we'll just go to a regular web page. Look at the difference. You see the iPhone is on 50%. We'll be, we'll be even generous. We'll put it to 40%. Look at the difference in the screen brightness. Are you kidding me? The screen brightness on this phone. Now, you might be saying, oh, that ain't too bad. It ain't too bad right here. But if you step outside and that direct sunlight beams down on this phone, this shit is invisible. All right, you can't see it. Now, if you're trying to save battery and you put your phone on 30%, look at this here. This is off. Your, your phone display is off. So for me, I got to rock max brightness. That's going to end up killing your battery. But in order to enjoy this beautiful quad HD display, 90 hertz refresh rate, all that bullshit, you're going to have to use max brightness. Now watch this. I'm going to put the iPhone on max brightness. Look at the difference. Now, it might be hard to see right here, but you're seeing that 50%. The iPhone, this is, this is one of the brightest phones that I got. Galaxy makes bright phones too. 
the brightness on this is trash. I, I just gotta call, I just gotta keep it real and call it the way I see it. It's trash. Next, now let me show y'all something else. Here's something else I don't like. This big ass forehead, all right? This phone got a big giant forehead. Let's 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 matter of fact, let's um open that. Where was we? I open back up to Amazon. Look at the size of that forehead. Now I understand you need the big forehead for the radar sensors. Uh, I, I understand, I know, I know. Stop typing, I know. But check this out. When you put the case on, <laughs> when you put the case on, not only does it have the big ass Rihanna forehead, now when you, now shout out to Rihanna, all right? I love Rihanna, but she got a big forehead. This got the big ass forehead. And then when you put the case on, now you got another head. Right, you got two heads on this here. And look, I try not to be petty. All right, I spent a thousand bucks on this phone. I try not to be petty. But you can't not see this. I right, look. As a matter of fact, let me show y'all something real quick. Let me pull out one of these other other little bullshit Android phones that I just did the other day. Look at this, yo. Look at the difference. Y'all see the Vivo Next? No forehead at all. No forehead. No chin. On-screen fingerprint sensor. Face unlock. You got a little bit of chin on this. Now I ain't really gonna complain about the chin, but that forehead right there. That forehead right there. Nah, bro, I'm not feeling that at all. I'm not feeling that forehead on this phone at all. And like I said, when you drop the case on, now you got two heads, all right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Let's keep it moving. Next, the battery. 3,700 milliamp battery, that ain't enough. All right, that ain't enough. Now look, I ain't gonna gripe and say that the battery is trash. All right, it's not really trash. But being that the phone's brightness is trash, you're gonna end up, especially if you work outside, you're gonna have your phone on max brightness. You spend a thousand bucks, you're gonna wanna force 90 hertz refresh rate. Uh, you wanna enjoy that smoothness. The battery life on this, sad to say, does not get me through a full day. And the reason I say it's sad, because in this day and age, even my iPhone, man, now, <laughs> even my iPhone is, now, I'm, I'm not trying to hate, even my iPhone is getting me a full day. Actually, not only am I not hating, the iPhone has one of the dopest batteries of, I, I say the iPhone and the Galaxy this year, out of the flagship category, not all their Asus Rogue phones and all of these phones with 5,000 milliamp batteries, all these gaming phones. When it comes to the heavy hitters, this battery right here is ridiculous. I've never came home at the end of the day and my iPhone is off. I had the Pixel the other day, I was in the city. Y'all see the pictures for yourself. When I got home, my Pixel, I didn't even notice, the battery had turned off. Now it was in the red, I noticed that, but I went to use it, the battery was off. Granted, if you use the phone like a normal human being, you're not having, you don't have it on max brightness, you don't have 90 hertz refresh, you don't have the always on display on, you could probably get a full day. But the way that I use phones, I can't get a full day. And that sucks because I could whip out my iPhone, get a full day, I could whip out my Galaxy, get a full day, and I can name another, a dozen other phones that I could get a full day worth of battery, not with the Pixel, all right? Battery, pretty rubbish. Next, the camera. Now I got four gripes with the camera. Number one, you can't shoot 4K 60 frames per second. On a thousand dollar phone, that's bullshit. All right, that's garbage. On a thousand dollar phone, 4K 60 frames per second should be standard. Next, the front facing camera only shoots 1080p. Now think about it like this. If you buying this to make your videos, make your vlogs, do whatever you want, everything is gonna be in 1080. That's garbage. All right, get a Galaxy Note. Get all, get any one of these new phones out right now. 4K on the front camera, 4K on the rear camera. The Pixel, no 60 frames per second on the rear, no 4K on the front. Next, no pro mode. All right, no pro mode on your camera. Now granted, Google does have one of the best uh, computer optimizations when it comes to a phone camera. You can also take a picture and then go to settings and you know edit the picture the way you want it. But all my hardcore photographers out there, you want to change your shutter speed, you want to change the white balance, all right? You want to change all of the, the, the professional modes, the professional settings, you can't do it. Now, I'm going to keep it real with y'all. I don't really use pro mode like that, but just because I don't use it doesn't mean that I don't want it, all right? If right now my car got launch control, I never be launching my car nowhere, but there might be that one time that I want to launch. So I want it. I already paid for it. I want it. Same thing. There might be a time that I want to change the white balance. I want to manu manually change the white balance. I want to manually change my shutter speed. You can't do it on this phone. Now, here's the biggest gripe that I got with the camera. No wide angle lens. 
That is 100% garbage. Wide angle lens. Now look, people that never use wide angle, if you had an iPhone XS Max, you never had wide angle on none of your iPhones, you probably was like, oh, who cares about that? Why they always making a big deal about that until you got your iPhone 11? Then you was like, oh, now I see why they made making a big deal about wide angle. It's dope. Look, you got this big square in the back. They could have dropped the camera right in the middle. All right, if you're gonna make it look like an iPhone, at least let it perform like an iPhone. Just keep it real. Let me say it like this. Now, I take a lot of pictures of cars. I'm a car guy, so I'm always at the car shows. I'm at the car meets. I like to do my car flex photo. You know, you got your, yo, fellas, you know what I'm talking about. You got your hand on the steering wheel. Right, your dashboard is nice and clean. You got all your lights and all your gadgets. You wanna get that flex picture? When you're using the Pixel, you gotta have the phone right underneath your neck in order to try to get as much into the frame as possible, and you're still not gonna get the side of your door. With the iPhone, Galaxies, any phone that has wide angle, all you gotta do is press one button and go wide. Now, I know some of y'all gonna say, look, when you do the wide angle, yeah, it kinda distorts the picture and all of that. You don't gotta think about it as wide angle. Think about it as wider, wider angle. You see now, say I was trying to take a picture of this. I don't have to have this big distorted photo like that. I could do wide angle and then zoom in a little, just a little bit. The other day I'm at this car show, right? They got three Ferraris parked next to each other. You know I need that shot. Take out my pixel. I can't get all three Ferraris into the same frame without walking back a hundred feet. That's garbage. Pulled out my iPhone, hit wide angle, and then zoomed in a little bit and got the shot. No wide angle is a deal breaker for me. That's garbage. That's why this phone could never be my main phone. It can never be my, let me go out to the car show phone. Let me go to the, let me the Six Flags with the family phone. This could never be that phone because of no wide angle. And that's a downer, man. Google, y'all really dropped the ball on that one. Pixel 5, drop a wide angle. The space is there. I, I, I know you got the uh, laser autofocus. Uh, who cares? Put a camera right there. You see that big spot right there? Right there. Wide angle lens. We would have been in business. Next, no fingerprint sensor. Now, I hate that, all right? Now look, I've been using my Pixel 3 as my work phone. There's no face unlock on the Pixel 3, but one of the things I love about it is picking up the phone like this and you know, just using it as my work phone, I've been doing it every day. So I just pick up the phone with my, my finger just automatically, not accidentally, my finger automatically goes to the fingerprint sensor in the rear and opens it up. Redundancy, you got this Pixel 4, with the face unlock bug, you're gonna have to turn that off if you live in the scumbag life. So now every time you open your phone, you're gonna have to be going like this with the padding. Now I hate that. Now I turned the face unlock on this just off for a little while just to play around with it. And the thing that I hated the most, a lot of times you pick up your phone, you open it up, say you go to Instagram real quick, and you're like, okay, let me exit out of that. Exit out, you close your phone, you oh shit, I sh you forgot one more thing. So you hit the button again to open it back up real quick. Fingerprint sensor, face unlock, open it, open, open it back up real quick. If you turn off face unlock, every time you close your phone and open it again, you're going to have to be putting your padding in or your pin every single time. That's pretty trash. I don't like that. They could have dropped the fingerprint sensor right under the display like everybody else. And look how fast that works. Anybody that's saying, oh, nah, I didn't hit it right. <laughs> Anybody, don't, don't troll me. Anybody saying that on-screen fingerprint sensors is garbage, they never used it. All right, all your Apple fanboys talking about on-screen fingerprint sensors is slow. Pick up a OnePlus. All right, pick up a OnePlus, play with that fingerprint sensor. Look at that. That's all day long. No fingerprint sensor. I am not feeling that at all. Now, lastly, this is my last thing that I don't like about the Pixel 4 XL, the face unlock bug. I'm calling it a bug because it could probably be fixed with an update. You can unlock your phone with your eyes closed. Let that sink in for a second. Fellas, ladies, and the ladies are scumbags too. All y'all scumbags out there, all right, shout out to all my scoundrels, all y'all dirty rotten scoundrels out there. You're not gonna like this, all right? You live in a scoundrel life, you're not gonna like this phone. Not to mention, not only a scumbag, all right, you worried about your girl opening your phone while you're sleeping. Not only that, we all got that one dumbass friend, you'll get drunk around this cat, and you'll fall asleep or you'll pass out, he'll take your phone, unlock it, Upload some pictures to your Instagram, change your Facebook status to something crazy. He might even just go through your photos. Again, he'll be looking at your girl's butt cheeks, sending the pictures to his phone. It's always going to be that one person that does that. Not to mention, 
who wants a phone that you can open with your eyes closed? Now, when I first got the phone, somebody texted me and was like, oh, try it. I heard you can open it with your eyes closed. I'm like, nah, that can't be right. That can't be right. So I laid in the bed. I, put, I laid in the bed and I put my sleep face on. I, I got the sleep face on. I'm acting like I'm sleeping. I went like this. You hear that little sound? It's a little bloop. I got my eyes closed. I'm doing like, I'm going to close my eyes right now. You hear that bloop? Once I heard that, I bust out laughing and was like, nah, this is a fail. All right, this is a fail. Now, obviously, Google probably fixed that with a, you know, basic software update. But that ain't the point. I know a lot of y'all apologists out there. I hate going into arguments with y'all because y'all stay apologizing for these companies. We can't be cutting them no slack. I know I ain't. I, I spent a thousand bucks. I want this shit to work right now. All right, now look, it's one thing if Google would have said, look, we got a problem with the face unlocked. You can open it with the eyes closed. Look, we'll charge you 700 bucks. Then when we fix the software update, you owe, you owe us 300 bucks. I'd have been like, all right, cool. But no, they took the thousand bucks from me <laughs> last week. I want, I want the full phone now. I don't want half of the phone. You ever go to McDonald's and be like, yo, let me get a number six. Imagine you pay $13 or whatever for a number six and they say, oh, we got to give you the fries tomorrow. Come back for the fries tomorrow. You're not going to do that. You're going to be like, in that case, yo, minus the price and just give me the, give me the sandwich and the, and the drink. Same thing, man. For a thousand bucks, I want everything to work the way it's supposed to work. And this ain't the way it's supposed to work. All right. If you really think about it, that's garbage. Because now with this face unlocked like that, you can't just use your your face unlock for your banking and all that. There's no fingerprint sensor. All right, so you now every time you go to your bank app or you try to, you know, buy something online, you gotta be putting all these codes in and all that. That's whack, yo. That's whack, yo. The face unlock, they need to fix that. All right, now look, I'm not a scumbag, but I know a lot of y'all are, <laughs> and y'all not gonna like that. Now, let me talk about my little petty gripes. Y'all know they call me Petty Roosevelt, so I gotta live up to the name. Number one. No screen record toggle. Now look, this ain't my first day on the job, all right? I know about developer options, feature flags. Uh, matter of fact, I was doing that on the Pixel 3. You can't do it on this one, though, all right? You can't go to developer options and add the uh, screen record, but that's neither here nor there. That should have been a regular toggle. It should have been a screen record toggle the same way you hit the button, you got screenshot. Why not move emergency down? I just move it down a couple of inches and put screen record. Screen record. That's not that's not like some weird feature that nobody uses. Anybody that's on Instagram, you watching somebody's Instagram live, you want to get a quick screen record. All right, shorty out there thotting it up on Instagram. You know what I'm saying? You want to record that? Screen record. No screen record toggle. Now that's kind of petty because you can download screen record apps, and some of the screen record apps actually allow you to uh, uh, set up a toggle. But the problem with a lot of those apps, now you got the ads that come with it. And if you want to get rid of the ads, you got to pay some more money. Now you got to download a screen record app. You only got 64 gigs with your broke ass. That's taking into some of your gigage. All right. I don't like that. Next. Always on display. Now this is a dope always on display. But I wish you could have made it more customizable. Let me see. Do I got one of my other phones with me? Let's see. What do I got in my pocket? I want to show you all real quick. Oh, here we go. Yeah, check this out. Galaxy Note. Look at the... Look at, look at the Look at the um, always on display on my Galaxy. You see the car toggles? Race car status? Customizable, always on display. All right, Google, don't follow Apple's pattern of one size fits all. All four of us having dinner, all four of us got a pixel, all four of us always on display look exactly the same. Now, it's pretty dope. It's pretty dope. But companies like Samsung and LG, they allow you to customize your always on display, throw some pictures, throw some animations on there. That would have been way better. Next. Now, this is pretty petty. <laughs> this is pretty petty. But the Google bar in the bottom. All right, Android is all about customization. I hate the fact that you can't move the Google bar from the bottom to the top. You can't move your daily cal calendar from the top to the bottom. Now, if y'all watch my videos, you see all of my phones look the same. My Google bar is always on the top. That's the way I like it. Why am I forced to have it on the bottom? I can't get rid of it. I don't like that. All right, this is a this is a widget. It should be working like any other widget. Maybe I want it right in the middle. Maybe I want it all the way at the top. Customization. Next, the motions. Now I do love the motions on this. We're gonna talk about that in a minute. But they should have had more motions other than swipe back, swipe forward. All right, for your music controls, swipe 
to change the song, swipe to reverse the song, that ain't enough. We need a palm for pause, palm for play. Now shout out to LG with the G8, they did it big, all right? Not only can you switch and reverse tracks, you could go like this, raise and lower the volume. You can play and pause your music. Now I'm gonna talk about how much I do love those motions in a second, but they should have had more, all right? They should have had more. Maybe they can update that. You got all these radars and sensors and gizmos at the top. Add some more motions. Lastly, the squeezology. Now, I love the squeezology. You know what I'm saying? I love that. But think about this. Remember the HTC U12? They should have made it when, when, you, when you squeeze it, you can assign an app. So I squeeze it and open up Instagram. Squeeze it, turn on my flashlight. Now, that was the thing I used the most on my HTC U12. I love having the squeeze for the flashlight. I jump in the car, I can't find all my paraphernalia, squeeze it, automatically turn my flashlight on. With this one, the squeeze does work pretty much the same, but all you can do is access your Google. You can also do a few other features, but you can't assign it to an app, and you can't assign it to a quick toggle like a flashlight or a screenshot. That would have been sick. That would have been sick. Now, I know what y'all saying. <laughs> After all of those gripes, everything that he don't like, he really don't like this phone, no. I actually do like this phone, and I'm going to tell you everything that I do like right after this quick commercial break. All right, so now let's talk about everything that I do like. Number one, the build quality. Now, these phones have a heavyweight feel to it. Definitely premium, nothing cheap at all. I love the materials. You got that matte finish on the back. Even the sides feel matte, all black trim, blacked out camera. And if you look closely, there's smudges and fingerprints all over the back of this phone, but if you lay it flat on the table, even without wiping it down, it still looks clean. Not to mention, it's water resistant and you got wireless charge. The build quality is A1. Next, let's talk about the look. Here's last year's Pixel versus this year's. Which one looks newer and more modern? Obviously the four. Now I was never a big fan of the two-tone finish on the back. I hated the one camera look, just made your phone look mad old school. Now you got the blacked out square camera, which is going to give you that iPhone look, which on the side note, I hated this square look at first, but it actually grew on me. All right? Just like anything else in life, once you get it and you start using it every day, chances are it might grow on you. And this one grew on me. Plus, when you drop the case on, no matter what color pixel you got, it's always going to look like a blacked out phone. So that's pretty sick. So if you get the orange, don't worry about walking around with the orange phone. You get the orange, get a black case, drop the case on it. Where's the orange at? No more orange. That's tough. Not to mention this also. I keep saying not to mention, but <laughs> I mentioned it anyway. I'm a caseologist. But when I go out to dinner somewhere, you don't see me with some big ass out of box case or some silly looking case unless it's a leather case. Once I sit down at the table, I like to take my case off and enjoy the phone. This is one of those phones that's gonna look sick when you put it on the table. It just looks nice and sleek. Next, let's talk about the feel. Now, not the physical feel, the emotional feel of using this phone. I like it. Now, it's not gonna give you that same trendy feel as using an iPhone. You're not gonna have that boss feeling of using the Galaxy Flex. But if you heavy into the Android community, all right, you hang out with all of the nerds, you're a boss in the nerd game because everybody knows this is the newest Android version. All right, so if they come out with Android 11 on Monday, you got it Monday night. Everybody else with the Galaxies, the Xiaomi's and the Huawei's and HTC's, they gotta wait. You know you're in the top of the food chain when it comes to the Android software. All right, so the emotional feel on this, I like it. Next, let's talk about the display. Now, even though the display is pretty dark, it's pretty dark, you're gonna have to rock it at max brightness. Once you do achieve max brightness status, I right, full douchebag status, this display is beautiful. Let's get a wipe down for the dramatic effect. AMOLED panel, look how dark the blacks are. You can't see where the forehead, and, and the, you can't see where the forehead ends and the screen starts. It just looks like one big black panel. All right, I'm feeling the display. Not to mention 90 hertz refresh rate. So when you take it over to Instagram, all right, your scrolling speeds going to be super fast. Now, if you want to, all right, you could force 90 hertz. You don't have to have it downgrade to 60. Super fast scrolling speeds, nice and smooth. 
All right, so I'm definitely feeling the display, quad HD status. I just wish it was brighter. All right, my bad, y'all. I had to take a phone call. Next, let's talk about face unlock. Now, like I said earlier, even if it didn't have that bug where it worked with your eyes closed, to me, this is still the second best face unlock in the game, right behind the iPhone. Now, as dope as this one is, with the radar and the motion and all that, my only problem is, when I'm wearing my sunglasses, sometimes I have to press the button twice. But right now, with no glasses on, straight face, this face unlock is crazy. And I love the radar, so as you're approaching your phone, as soon as you pick it up, bang, there it is. Face unlock on this is incredible. All right, Google, you yeah, gotta fix that situation where you can open it with your eyes closed, and this is gonna be top tier status. Next, let's talk about the speakers. All right, now let me pull this up real quick. I'll pull up a YouTube video, my favorite video for testing out speakers, and I wanna show y'all something real quick. Now with the Pixel 3, you had these big front-facing speakers, so you would think that now without the big front-facing speakers, it's gonna take a hit with the quality, no. The speakers sound exactly the same. All right, let's get max volume on this. These speakers are incredible. Listen to that. You can feel the phone shaking a little bit from the vibration of the bass. The size of that forehead. Let's cover up the bottom. Now I want to show y'all something real quick. All right, check this out. Now I got the same video queued up on the three and the four. Now remember, the three has dual front facing speakers, the four, one is on the bottom, one is in the earpiece. See if you can hear any difference. Here's the three. Now here's the four. They sound exactly the same. All right, I love these speakers. This is how you want to watch your videos. All right, next, let's talk about the battery. Now, even though I said the battery is not the best, it's definitely not the worst. Now, I get comments all the time. Somebody said they got a Pixel 4 XL and they're only getting two hours of screen on time. That's bullshit. All right, you're not getting iPhone 11 Pro Max or Galaxy Note 10 Plus battery life, but if you tweak the settings, I right, turn off 90 hertz refresh rate, turn off the always on display, turn the brightness down, turn on adaptive battery, kill your apps running in the background, you will be able to get a full day's worth of battery. Now the way I use the phone, everything on max status, I can't get a full day. But like I said, the battery is not the worst in the world. Next, let's talk about performance. Now this is the reason why you're buying a Pixel. Now I said this phone could never be my daily driver, but it's definitely my daily work phone. The performance on this phone is amazing. All right, no lag whatsoever, nice and smooth, everything works, no hiccups. I love it. All right, this phone performs like a beast. Now look, I know some people got the Pixel 3 and I've been going in the comments some people saying their Pixel 3 started to lag. Some of y'all be downloading all of these bullshit apps, all of these games and third-party apps. Sometimes that'll make your phone slow down. Now I keep my phone pretty much stock and only the apps that I need. My Pixel 3 is still running the same as when I took it out the box from day one. No lag, I've never had any problems at all. And that's why this has always been my work phone. And that's why this one will be my work phone. Next. Let's talk about reliability. Now, this is another reason why you're buying a Pixel. The reliability. This is one of those phones, when you pull it out of your pocket, you hit that button, you turn it on, this phone works. All right, you're never gonna have no lag issues, shit freezing in the background, no. This phone is ultra reliable. That's why it's my work phone. When it comes to getting my money and my work stuff done, I can't be playing around on Galaxy phones, taking chances with the loading screens and sometimes the, you hit the fingerprint sensor, it don't work. Sometimes you gotta restart the phone. No, this is one of those phones that's super reliable and you never gotta restart this. Now I'm keeping it 100 with y'all. 
I've went months at a time without restarting my Pixel, and sometimes I hit the recently used apps, and I've had 25 apps open at the same time, and it still runs perfectly. All right, so the performance and the reliability, that's two of the reasons why you get in the Pixel. Next, now let's talk about the best feature of this phone, the camera. Now, I'm not a professional photographer, and I don't try to act like one. I'm more of a point-and-shoot kind of guy, and if you like that too, you're going to love this one. Now, last year's Pixel had arguably the best Android phone camera. This one is no different. Check this out. Now, last night I went to dinner, so I had to take my official Instagram food picture to let y'all know I'm living my best life. You know what I'm saying? Let y'all know I'm eating good. And check this out. This is point and shoot right out of my pocket. You can almost taste this picture. Now, I hate using all the fancy camera terminology. I'd rather just post some pictures and videos and you be the judge for yourself. Take a look at these. Next, let's talk about some of the gimmicks that I like. You got your squeezeology. All right, so you squeeze the phone, talk to your Google Assistant. What's the weather for tomorrow? Bang. Now this came in handy yesterday. I right, shout out to my man Clay. I had to meet him in the city. So I'm driving around and I remembered the squeezeology while I'm holding the pixel and I went like this. Where's the nearest parking lot? This is me driving. Bang, just like that hit directions, and boom, just pulled it up. So the squeezeology is nice. Next, you got your voice recorder. Now this is pretty sick. Let's hit transcribe. Watch how this transcribes my voice. Remind me tomorrow to pick up some food for this cat and also to take my car to the shop and change my oil. No mistakes. Save it just like that. All right, we'll hit save, and then bong. Now, if I want to play it back, got the transcript. Tomorrow to pick up some food for this cat, and also to take my car to the shop and change my oil. That is so sick. 
All right, now you can use this to send long text messages. All right, you and your shorty going to war back and forth. Instead of going like this, mad thumb action, you can transcribe a whole message and just send it right over. No mistakes. All right, so I'm loving that feature. Now let me show you my favorite gimmick. All right, so here's my favorite gimmick, the motion gestures. Now let me show you how I use this the most. When I'm playing Mortal Kombat online, busting ass as usual, I always got my little speaking stand. All right, so I put my phone on the stand, I connect it to two JBL Party Box 1000s, and I'm rocking out. I got my bus ass playlist. So while the music is playing, every now and then, a song will come on that I don't wanna hear. So I got the controller, I can block and go like this, switch to the next song while I'm playing. All right, so while I'm playing, I got somebody in the corner, I'm giving them that medicine, whop, to the next song, keep it pushing. I love the motion gestures. All right, so now let me show you some accessories. You already seen the Pixel Stand for wireless charging, 80 bucks on that. You see my two favorite cases, 40 bucks a piece on these, available from Google. Now let me show you two more cases. Now both of these you could get from Incipio, I'll throw the links up in the description. The price on these, 30 bucks a piece. First up, we got the Dual Pro. Now you're getting two layers of defense, shock absorption in a core, wireless charge compatible, and drop tested from 10 feet. Okay, scratch resistant, durable out of shell, wrap around coverage, raised bezel, add screen protection. Okay, so here we go, the Dual Pro. Now y'all seen this case a bunch of times. All right, flick of the wrist. Check this one out. All right, two part case, TPU, hard shell on the outside, raised buttons, cutouts, buttons, cutouts. Let's slap this one on. Okay. Look at that, nice tight fit. Let's check that power button. All right, hold on, let me, let me do that right. Okay, there it is. Look at the razivity on this one. Now this is maximum razivity, Slam Boy certified. Let's check wireless charge. Matter of fact, I'll turn it off. Okay, there's your wireless charge. Let's check the buttons. No problems with that. Now this one is gonna give you way more protection than the Google cases. And on a side note, the Google cases are for when you're gonna flex, all right? Now let me show you what I'm talking about. Here's my work phone. If you look closely, this case will get dirty. And once it gets dirty, it loses the pizzazz. All right, so now my orange one, my orange one is already starting to show a little bit of wear, but these black ones tend to last. Let me show you my black one. All right, this black one does last. But if you rock it every day, it might start to get dirty. So you get something like this for your day-to-day -day usage. Let me show you one more. We got another Dual Pro, but this is the clear version. All right, same two layers of defense, same uh, shock absorption, inner core, wireless charge compatible, blah, blah, blah. Crystal clear version, okay? All right, let me see if I can hit shoes. Flick at the wrist. <laughs> Try to hit shoes in the back. Same thing, two-part style case. All right, shoes ain't think that was funny. Let's drop this one on. Now, this one is gonna showcase the color of your phone. Let's check the buttons. All right, there's your buttons. Let's check wireless charge. Oh, is this, there it is, wireless charge on deck. All right, now shoes don't get scared, but this case is Slam Boy certified. Look at the razivity on this one. All right, so two cases from Incipio, 30 bucks a piece. Let's wrap this up. All right, so overall, on a scale of one to 10, the Google Pixel 4 XL is a major go. Is this the best Android phone out right now? No. Does it have the most secure face unlock? No. Does it have the brightest display? No. Does it have the longest lasting battery? No. Does it have the most RAM and storage? No. Does it have the most features? No. So why would you buy this phone? If you're looking for a smooth, lag-free, reliable Android phone that's water resistant, has wireless charge, always on display, a great display at max brightness, excellent loudspeakers, an amazing camera, and the latest version of Android with guaranteed updates for two years, then check this one out. But for a thousand bucks, it's a no for me, dog. Anyway, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what y'all think about this one.
Shout out to everybody rocking with me on Facebook, Foursquare, Twitter, Google Plus. Shout out to all the Google gangsters. I see y'all holding down that Facebook page. Shout out to everybody hitting me up on Boxer. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with me on Instagram. Y'all know that's where I'm at full time, 100% full throttle. And a special shout out to everybody rocking with the new stream on Sundays. Y'all already know, stream gangsters on deck. Get your drinks ready. No meat boys allowed. Oh yeah, special shout out to everybody following me on Snapchat, Flossy underscore Carter, that's where I'm at. And a special shout out to the notification squad, I'll see y'all in the comment section early, hashtag salute. Oh yeah, one more thing, I almost forgot. Fellas, ladies, say it with me. All y'all haters, all y'all trolls, close your eyes. And pitch and be rolling. It's your boy Floss, I'm out. Deuces. Enterprise, Spock here. Spock won the beam up. Captain. Enterprise We're in a situation where everybody in the world uses technology. And if you're going to buy some of that technology, you got to understand certain things. Subscribe to Flossy Carter. He does reviews of all the latest technology. The iPhones, the iPads, the Galaxies, the Samsungs, whatever the fuck. The Beats by that doctor guy. And he puts his kitty cat in the videos too for you something to look at. You know, I'm an animal lover, so I like that shit. So make sure you hit the subscribe button, the Flossy Carter on the YouTube, the follow button on the Insta face, and the like button on the Facebook. Because if you don't, we're going to have a fucking problem here. A bad one. Now hit the fucking subscribe button.